Hi, now if you've ever struggled to know what to put in your automated email sequence, that sequence it takes um, the person who subscribed to your opt-in offer or free gift or a lead magnet from that offer through to uh, inviting them to work with you. If you've struggled to know what it is that you need to put into those emails, then today's video is all about that. Hi, my name is Kelly O'Brien and I'm an online marketing and social media coach and I help you move your most aligned clients from discovering who you are online through to investing with you using storytelling, strategy and systems. And today we're looking at the storytelling inside that automated email sequence. Now I have a bit of a framework that I use for my automated email sequences. Now I say um, this is a framework because the reality is when I work with this, uh, work in this framework um, with my clients, often we end up uh, bringing in different emails into this sequence. They might may go in different orders uh, and there's different stories. So sometimes we will look and do the uh, storytelling map which I'll provide a link to here. But once we've done that, that really identifies some really powerful stories that we know just have to go into this email sequence. But um, we always start with that framework to begin with and then um, uh, change things as we see opportunities or if we know more about the ideal client and how we can shift them from obviously the free offer to a paid offer. So the system is called Access. And this is how it works. The first email is A in access, and that is our aspiration or problem. So what we're doing here is delivering the gift to them. We're giving them that free thing that they've actually um, opted in for so that uh, we are delivering on our promise um, that we had on the landing page. And of course, this um, email also is an opportunity to welcome them into your community and tell them a little bit about yourself, just a couple of lines that really um, uh, is a statement that positions you and your authority in this space. So that's our first email. Our second email that we have in the sequence is the C, which is the cause or the why. And the reason that this is so important is because it allows people to understand and get to know who you are and why what you do is so important to you. And we already know the Simon Sinek quote, we've heard it a million times before, but people don't uh, buy what you do, they buy why you do it. So this is a great opportunity for you to be explaining to your audience, these new people who have come into your audience, who you are, why you're so passionate about this, and then you start building that connection with them. Um, if they don't believe in your cause and your why, then they'll jump and that's fine. Um, they're not the right fit for you. But the people who really resonate with your message um, will love you for this particular email. Next, the third one in access, and that's current belief systems. Now, you will find that uh, your ideal client already has made up some excuses or some reasons or already has some beliefs around why they're not going to invest with you. It's what we do when we land on a, on a sales page. We kind of come up with all the reasons why not uh, to buy or to invest in this or work with um, this person. So you need to be able to overcome all of those objections before they even get to see your sales page or your offer. So this is where this email can play um, a really pivotal role. Now there are different beliefs that people have. There are beliefs that we have about our industry um, based on what other people in, in your industry are doing. And so uh, people have a perception of who you are, whether that's true or not. Then we have our internal beliefs. So these are the stories that we tell ourselves, those things that say, I'm not good enough. And um, you know, this, those fear-based fear stories that we tell ourselves. And then there's some external ones, which is usually the economy uh, is bad, now's not a good time to invest, or those sorts of stories um, that people tell, tell. So what you need to do is highlight which of those are the most relevant. Uh, choose one if you want to do a couple of emails. Sometimes I have clients who it's, it's really important for us to do more than one email here because there are a couple of really, really strong beliefs that we know that we need to overcome in this sequence. Um, and so we take those and create um, stories that change, shift their belief system. So it shifts them from believing that this is to be tr this is true, um, why they can't, why they won't be able to invest, to um, 
to completely understanding why, looking at things, I guess, from a different perspective. Um, so they'll be able to see things from your point of view and have a better understanding of how this is going to solve their problem because in the end, this is what it's all about, is about solving their problem and helping them. Next in access is E, which is endorsement. And this is about getting some case studies or testimonials to be able to share in your newsletter. Now there is nothing more powerful than social proof. To know that you have already helped somebody else uh, with the problem that they have and they can see the tangible results at the end of it. In the end, that's really what people want. They want the transformation. They want to know um, that you can take them from A and get them to B. And if you can show that you've done it for other people who are just like them, then that's really powerful. Now, right now, I'm doing um, a heap of case studies for um, a particular client. We're doing them for a blog. But the reality is that these case studies, we're not looking for the best story that you can possibly have or the one with the biggest results possible because sometimes your ideal client will feel far too removed from that story. What you need is an ideal client who is just like the people that you want to attract and you tell their story because they can relate to it, they want the same results, um, and it's far more powerful as far as storytelling goes. Now, the last two steps in access is the two S's, which are sales. Soulful sales, um, of course, is where we're, we're uh, trying to head with this. We don't want to be icky or pushy or feel, manip or feel we're manipulating people into buying something, which in all reality leads to buyer's remorse. We don't want to go there. So what we're doing is inviting them to work with us. Really, that's what the sales email is. It's showing them the value of what you're able to provide for them um, and the transformation that you can provide, um, how you show up and why you are different um, and why you are unique and um, your system so that they know that you're the person that they want to invest in. So those two, um, two final uh, emails, the sales-based emails, still have stories in them. You can still open with a really powerful story. Um, it can be a personal story. It can be a uh, working with a client story. It can be another case study style story, if that makes sense, if you've got a really powerful one. But that's what we're looking for in the last two is to actually invite people to work with you because the reality is if we do this entire email sequence and we never ask them to work with us, then they don't know what the next step is. So hopefully uh, that's helped you with getting a little bit more of an idea of the types of emails and types of storytelling that you need in your automated email sequence that takes people from your opt-in offer to your paid offer. And as you can see, it's quite simple, doesn't need to be overly complex. And by using that storytelling, we take away that um, salesy feel that, we, um, that uh, you may have seen in other types of email sequences. So access again is aspiration or problem, cause or why, current belief system, endorsement, and then two soulful sales emails. So good luck with your sequence. I'd love to hear how you're going with it. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.